Hi, Madman here with another tutorial. This time we're going to talk about how to use um, pivot joints to create a ragdoll figure, similar to the one I'm showing you uh, in this simulation. Um, this figure here has, um, oh, several joints, maybe 10 or so. And I'm going to show you how to do this. We're going to do a simplified version of this um, just to keep the time down. But uh, the concepts that we cover today are applicable to making this figure. I will post the code uh, for making this figure on, uh, in the YouTube uh, uh, description. So don't worry if you want to see you know, exactly how I made this. You'll be able to use that code as well. So why don't we get started. I'm going to uh, open um, an empty project. I've already got the, uh, the main.lua file open. So we're going to start, um, and it's with any physics-based application, you're going to need to require the physics library. So we'll do that first. And uh, we're going to start physics. And um, just to keep things uh, sane for me while I'm building the figure, we're going to uh, set the gravity uh, to zero. And the reason for that is I don't want all the objects, as I'm adding bodies to them, uh, to fall off the screen. Okay, we'll start off with the floor. We're going to make a rectangle, a really long skinny rectangle, and put it at the bottom of the screen. And I'll center it on the x-axis, put it right at the bottom of the screen on the y, and the, uh, the length is going to be the entire width of the device, and the height is going to be 5% of the height of the device. So let's see what we have, and let's see, save it, there we go. Got a white floor. Well, let's make it look a little more interesting. We're going to go ahead and uh, change the color using the set fill color method. And we're going to make it green. All right. Finally, we're going to add a physics body to it. And the reason we're going to do that is whenever we decide to uh, add gravity back into the app, uh, our, our uh, figure will have a place to land or stand, that is. So um, we're going to create a static body for the floor. There. Okay, good. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start building our figure. Um, I'm going to start with the head with, and by doing, uh, by using a new circle. So I'm going to locate it in the center on the x-axis and we're going to put it about 10% down from the top of the screen. And we're going to make the radius 30. And we're going to set the fill color to be yellow. Okay, let's see what we got here. Content center X. And let's try that again. There we go. All right. Um, let's go ahead and add a physics body to it. Uh, head. We're going to make this one dynamic. And we're going to add the radius property. Um, and we want the radius to be the same as the radius of the actual head object. So the physics body will have the same radius. If you don't supply this radius keyword, um, you'll see if you turn on hybrid view mode, you'll see that um, the physics body will actually be a, a square around that circle, which is not what we want. Save that. And um, because there's no gravity, uh, the ball stays put. That's good. Um, now, one other thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a new variable called head bounds. We're going to do this with uh, just about all of our objects, 
And what we're going to do is we're going to use this uh, content bounds property to return a group of values that dictate where the uh, the bottom of the y, the top of the y, the uh, the left of the x, and the right of the x values are of that object. Um, and that's going to be really useful because we'll be able to use them to locate um, the other objects in relation to this body. So you'll see how I do that when I start uh, when I create the neck. So what I've done here is I've created head bounds, and we're going to basically get four values loaded into uh, head bounds, which represent the uh, x min, x max, y min, and y max values. You'll see how those work soon. So now that we've created the head, we're going to create the neck. Also centered on the x-axis. Um, it's going to be um, where the head is plus half the width of the head. And it's going to be a skinny neck and rather short. I don't know if you can see that. Let's bring that over. Good. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and save. All right. Now you can see it kind of overlaps. That's because we haven't adjusted the uh, anchor Y property of the neck. We're going to do that next. And by setting the anchor Y property to zero, we're going to say the anchor isn't in the middle, but right at the top of that, which will position that down um, like that. Good. Um, we're going to load up another set of another uh, variable called neck bounds, and we are going to uh, get the content bounds of the neck, which we'll be using later. Actually, I don't know that I needed to use the head bounds. Uh, I did load it, and we'll keep it. Neck bounds we're definitely going to be using. Um, Next, let's go ahead and set the fill color to be the same as the uh, head. So neck, set fill color. And uh, let's see what I did here. Oh, load local. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. All right, moving on. Um, Let's finally add a physics body to our neck. And like the head, it's going to be dynamic. We want it to respond to gravity. And we'll save it. All right. OK, the next one is going to be a little trickier because we're going to use, instead of a square or a rectangle, we're going to use a polygon. Because I want the, um, this is going to be the torso. And unlike the, uh, the, the figure I showed you at the beginning of this video, this is going to be a fairly simple one. So the torso is just going to be made up of one object. We're going to make a uh, polygon, uh, four points on that polygon. So I'm going to make that definition right now. Torso equals display that new polygon. And the position is going to be right in the middle on the x-axis. And um, for the y-axis, this is where the neck bounds uh, variable that we set up back here comes into effect. What we're going to do, I, as I told you, we've returned four values uh, into a variable called neck bounds, and they're, they're properties of this uh, variable. In this case, we're going to specify the y-max property of neck bounds. So what that means is, um, we are going to place the torso right where the bottom of the neck, uh, neck is, which is uh, the y max value of neck bounds. Okay, so I've done that, and then I'm going to specify my vertices. Now, I haven't defined these vertices yet, so I'm going to have to go back 
above this statement and add the vertices. So I'm going to set up a, a table um, called vertices. You can call this anything you want. I'm just going to call it that. And um, in these uh, in the vertices, what you want to specify for polygons are x y coordinates uh, for all of the points for that polygon. So the first point is going to be at display dot content center. Uh, I'm sorry, display dot content width uh, times 0.6, so about 60% across the uh, screen. And the y. Uh, is going to be display dot content height times 0.2. So you can continue on this line and keep putting in your values, your pairs. I like to break them up uh, onto separate lines just so I can read these a lot easier. So the next uh, coordinate And so what the first one did placed uh, the polygon right about here, or placed the point right about here. The second pair goes over another uh, uh, 2, 5, 0 0.25 uh, over here to this side on the x-axis, um, and it's uh, at the same y-axis. Um, I can save this, um, and you'll see it. You're not going to see anything because it it has no depth right now. It's uh, it's just a straight line. You wouldn't see it yet. So we're going to add another uh, another pair. Okay. In this case, we've got a point here, a point here, and then. Um, we are going slightly back on the x-axis, only uh, 0.03, and we're going down another 2.5 or 2.5, 0.25. So it's going to be about right here. So let's save that and see what we get. Okay, good. Now don't worry about the placement of this yet because we're going to be moving that down in a minute. Okay, finally, um, we'll do the last set of coordinates. And the last point is going to be just like 3.03% uh, uh, from the original uh, point, and at 0.45 height. And there's our torso. Now, torso is in the wrong place, so we're going to deal with that in just a minute. Okay, so we got our vertices set up. We got the torso. Now we're going to. Um, we're going to go ahead and set the fill color of that torso. We're going to make that blue. Then we're going to change the uh, anchor Y. And we're going to set it to zero. And what that does, right now the torso is centered, is the anchor at the center of it. And this is where why it's, it's covering the face like that. So by moving the anchor to the very top, or at zero, um, that will push that torso down to where the neck is. Now remember, this is neck dot, as neck bounds dot uh, y max. Okay. Now the torso is also going to have things attached to it, so we're going to need to have a variable set up for the bounds for the torso. So let's set that up. Content bounds. And let's add our physics body. Good. All right. So we got the head, neck, torso. I'm going to start working on the arms. We're going to do the left arm and the right arm. Okay, so here's the left arm. For the left arm, we're going to use rounded rectangles because I just like the way those look. 
And the first two arguments are going to be the location. And here's where we use the torso bounds variable we just set up. And we're going to use the x min value for the x value and then the y min value uh, for the y value. And what that's going to do is it's going to place this um, rectangle object right here at this point of our uh, of our torso. It's using the torso x min, which is the the furthest to the left, and the y min, which is the furthest uh, closest to the top. So then I need to specify the size of the um, rectangle. It's going to be um, rather skinny on the x and um, kind of long on the y. And then the last argument, 5, is the corner radius of the rectangle. So let's save that and see what we get. All right. So it's not displaying in the right place yet because we still need to change the anchors of our arm. So I'm going to do that next. So we're going to set the anchor x to 1 because I don't want uh, the arm to be located halfway between uh, so that it overlaps this. I want it to be right on this side, this right side of the arm. So we're going to change the x to 1. And anchor y is going to be 0. And that will place the anchor right up there. Okay, save that. And now it's positioned where I expect it to be. Um, let's go ahead and change the color of the arm. Make it blue as well. And then we'll create a body, a physics body. Save it. Good. Now, I'm going to save myself a little time, and I'm going to copy uh, this block, and I'm going to make a right arm out of it. I'm going to call it R arm. Okay. And we're still going to use for locating it. We're going to use, the, well, first of all, we're going to keep the same dimensions and the corner radius. Um, but the, we're going to make a modification to the torso bounds. Instead of using x min, which would put it right there, we want to use x max. And we still want to keep y, um, y min the same. So we'll save that. And there we go. Okay, we're not quite done with the arm. Um, we also have to modify the anchor x. I don't know if you noticed this, but when I restart it, you can see how the arm starts off right here and then pushes its way over. We don't want that. We want to change the anchor because the anchor is right over here right now. We want to change it to zero. And you can see with a restart, now it's placed exactly where we want it to be. All right, let's move on. Uh, we've got the arm set up. And we're going to do the legs next. We're going to use rounded rectangles again. And um, here we're going to use for the location, we're going to base it off the torso, dot x. And we're going to add to it um, half the width of the torso. And then for the y location, we're going to place it at torso bounds, y max. And dimensions, display content width times 0.1, display dot content height times 0.35, and with a corner radius of 5. Save that. Okay, let's find out what I got here. Oh, torso dot width. There we go. 
Okay, the leg is slightly thicker. Um, it's not placed in the right place because we need to modify our anchors. We're gonna do that next. Um, X uh, is gonna be one and let's do that. Good. And uh, anchor Y is gonna be zero. There we go. And gonna make it blue. Now we're gonna add a body. Make it dynamic. Good. All right, I'm gonna copy and paste. We're gonna make the, the left leg now. Now for the left leg, um, we are not going to add the half the width to the torso, X. We're going to subtract it. And we're still going to place it at the Y max of torso bounds. We're also going to have to modify the anchor X on here. We want the anchor X to be 0, not 1. And there we go. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have all our display objects set up and physics bodies added to them, um, here we can set the gravity here to 9.8 like uh, we normally would have, and you'll see that everything sort of falls apart. Okay, so we don't want that. We're going to go ahead and set that back to zero because now we need to set up the joints that tie these units together. Okay, now that we've um, set up all the display objects, we're going to set up the joints that connect each of these objects together. Um, we're going to set up six joints in all. We're going to set up a joint between the head and the neck, another between the neck and the torso, uh, two for the arms, one uh, that joins the left arm and one that joins the right arm, and then two more for the legs, left and right. Um, they're all going to be um, pivot joints, and um, Let's go ahead and get started. So um, I like to call the joints um, names that make sense, that describe what the joints actually join together. So we're going to make the head to neck joint variable. You could call it whatever you want, but this is what I'm calling mine. Uh, and we're going to use the physics that new joint method and supply it with uh, keyword pivot to tell it's a pivot joint. The pivot joint has four arguments. Um, the first two arguments are the two objects to join together. So um, we're going to join the head and the neck. And um, the second two arguments specify the X and Y location of the, uh, of the anchors. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to anchor this neck object to the center of the, or not the center, but to the bottom of the head object. So to do that, we will say the anchor is going to be head.x and head bounds dot y max. So that puts the anchor right there. We'll save that. Uh, we can't really see anything at this point. Uh, once I put a touch listener in, you'll see how it works. Let's set up our next joint. We're going to do the neck to torso joint next. Another pivot joint. We're going to join the neck and the torso. And we're going to join them at neck.x and neck bounds that y max, the bottom of the neck. Okay. Next, um, we're going to do the torso uh, to left arm joint. Oops. 
this. And that's going to be uh, the torso and the left arm. At torso bounds dot x nin and torso bounds dot y nin, which will put it right there. Okay, and let's copy that and we're going to just paste it just to save a little bit of time. And we're going to make that the torso to right arm joint. Oops, I did not realize I had made a typo there. Get rid of those caps. Good. Um, and we're going to join the torso and the right arm with that. And um, for this, we're going to change x min to x max. But we're going to leave the y min alone because we still want it to be located up at the uh, top of the torso. So this is where the, uh, the other joint for the right arm is going to be. So we've got a joint here here, here, and here. All right. Save that. And we have two more joints to make, the leg joints. And this is the one for the left leg. Pivot. And we're going to join the torso to the left leg. And we're going to place it at torso.x minus um, the left leg, the width of the left leg divided by 2. So half the width of the left leg uh, subtracted from the torso x location. And then the y location is going to be uh, torso bounds dot y max, bottom of the torso. Let me, I like to make sure my camel case is good. Let's try that. Okay, seems okay. So we're going to copy this and we're going to paste this and do the right leg joint. And make that the right leg. And in this case, we're not going to subtract the width, half the width of a leg. We're going to add the width and we're going to make that the right leg. And that looks good to me. So we should have one, two, three, four, five, six joints here. So we're good. Okay, now that we've created all of our joints, um, we're going to create a, uh, a function that allows us to drag uh, the figure around. So I've copied up, loaded up in my, um, uh, my clipboard a function that I like to keep around. I just keep this function like in a snippet file on my computer because I use it a lot. Um, it's a drag body function um, and this allows me to, to click and drag on any objects that I um, put listeners on for and uh, drag things around. So I am um, I've actually covered this in a previous tutorial so be sure to check that out if uh, you want an explanation of this. Um, in the interest of keeping the time down um, I'm just gonna move on and just paste this in. Now, let's set up our event uh, listeners. I'm going to set one up on all of the objects that I've created, or most of them. I'll set it up on the head. We're going to add event listener. We're going to make it a touch listener. And uh, assign it to drag body. And I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm going to add a few more here. Add one to the left arm, to the right arm, to the left leg, the right leg, and to the torso. I'm not going to bother putting one on the neck. This should be enough. Let's save it. Now I should be able to grab the head and move the figure around. And you can see how the joints connect all of the objects together now you may notice how the arms don't really move naturally see how they're kind of moving in front of the guy um, 
I'm going to um, show you some properties that we can add to the joints to limit the movement of these things so they're a bit more natural. And look how the head is kind of rolling around like crazy. Let's fix that. I'm going to show you how that's done. So we're going to go back to our joints. I'm going to start with the head to neck joint. And I'm going to use um, the is limit enabled property for it. Head to neck joint dot is limit enabled equals true. So we're going to say that there is, we're enabling limits on the movement of that joint. And the next uh, thing we need to do though is tell it, well, what are the limits? So again, head to neck joint colon set rotation limits and in parens two values, the uh, low value and the, the high value. So we're going to set it to negative 5 and positive 5. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to show you the effect that has. Notice how the head moves a little bit, but not nearly as much as it did before. Now the neck still moves around quite a bit, so let's see if we can't fix that. So, oops, let's undo that. So let's do it again for the neck. Neck to torso joint dot is limit enabled equals true neck to torso joint set rotation limits I'm going to set those to zero because I don't really want that neck to torso to move around too much you can play around with these numbers so let's see what happens so it moves a bit and it's going to always move a bit depending on how much force you use but um, if you just move it slightly, you'll see it just barely moves. And okay, now that we've set these two joints up, we're going to set up the joints for the arms. Um, we're going to limit the movement of the arm, of the left arm and the right arm, such that this arm can go all the way up to the top, to the head, so that it can go 180 degrees, and, but it will only be able to go about 10 degrees over to the right. And also for the right arm, we're going to do the same thing except um, using opposite values. We'll allow it to go positive 10 degrees this way and then negative 180 up. So let's do that. So torso to left arm joint Oops. is limit enabled equals true. And then let's set those limits. And for the first one, it's going to be, we're going to allow it a negative 10, uh, which means uh, it will be allowed to go 10 degrees over to the, uh, to the right. And 180 positive, which is 180 degrees to positive or to the left. And we will save that. And I will try dragging that up that appears to be working. Yep. Yep, so you can see it's sort of it's allowed to go in 10 degrees, negative 10 degrees. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and do the next set for the arm, for the right arm. And we're going to switch these values, and we're going to make that first value negative 180 and positive 10. And there we go. And that works the way I would have expected to. So now you can see the legs are still a bit unnatural. You, most people can't do this, so we're going to fix that as well. So let's do their... Uh, their legs. Okay, so now that we've set the uh, arms uh, up, we're going to go ahead and set up the legs so that they can't move too uh, far out of whack. So let's um, modify the left leg joint.
And for that, we're going to set up um, set it up so that it can't, it can't move the, uh, the left leg in the in in uh, to the right at all, but it can move it 60 degrees to the left. And we're going to save that, and we should see. Yep, that seems to work. So let's do the same for the right. In this case, we um, want it to be able to move to the right, negative 60 degrees, but not to the left. Save that, and let's go ahead and turn on physics, not physics, turn on gravity. All right, now our guy's standing, we'll pick him up. You can see, kind of does the splits there, but doesn't want to move more than 60 degrees. Now I can force it to move, uh, but in resting position, it won't go beyond 60 degrees. So here's your figure. And that is how you make a ragdoll figure using pivot joints in Corona SDK. Hope you found this tutorial helpful. Um, please check out my other tutorials on Madman's uh, mobile app dev tutorials. Thanks for watching.